Okay, so what exactly is a radian? Well, we already know about how to measure angles in degrees. We know there's 360 degrees in a circle. So all a radian is, it's just another measure of rotation. And what you can think about is, you can think about this is like a spinner. Like say this, this is like a, your spinner and you're spinning it and then say it rotates to here. And then you can see that this arc that it you know, traverses we're gonna call S. So this is like our arc length. This is our radius, because you can see this is kind of like a circle. And what we wanna to do to find an angle and radian measure is we want to use this formula here. It's the ratio of the arc length divided by the radius. So a quick example would be, say for example you had an arc like this. Okay, so an arc is just like a part of a circle, right? And say that this radius here was like one inch. Say that this arc length, if you were to like straighten that out, it was two inches. Then we would say, okay, the ratio of the arc length divided by the radius would be two inches divided by one inches. So we would call this two radians. Okay, so you're probably still wondering, you know, well, what is a radian? Well, let's take it one step further. So we know that, say for example, we draw a circle like this. 360 degrees, so that's, we understand degrees, but if we use our formula, this arc length all the way around a circle is actually the circumference of the circle. And we know the formula for the circumference of a circle, it's two pi r. And we know that the radius, of course, is r. And if we, again, take the ratio of the arc length, which is two pi r, that's once around the circle, divided by the radius, which is r, you can see that those r's are canceling. And so now what we have is two pi radians represents 360 degrees. So that's our way of converting. Now, to make it a little bit simpler, if we just go half a revolution, so if we just go halfway around the circle, 180 degrees, 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Okay, so now we're starting to get a little bit better feel. So we can kind of say 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. So we can use what we call a conversion factor, and that's gonna be either 180 over pi or pi over 180 because remember these are equal to one another anything divided by itself is one so by multiplying say for example if we had 45 degrees and we want to know you know what is that in radians we're going to multiply by this conversion factor here pi over 180 degrees notice how that degree symbol in the numerator cancels with the degree symbol in the denominator and when we multiply horizontally across we get 45 pi over 180 and you can see that 45 goes in here once, 45 goes in here four times, so we're left with one pi over four, or you could just say pi over four, and then this is now in radians. Notice we don't have that degree symbol there anymore. Now, if we wanted to go the other direction, where we're given an angle in radians, like two pi over three, notice there's not a, a degree symbol there, we're gonna use this conversion factor, 180 degrees for every pi radians. So now we can see that the pi's in the denominator cancel with the pi radians in the numerator. If we multiply horizontally across, this is 360 divided by three, which is 120 degrees, and now you've converted you know, from radians into degrees. So you're still probably wondering, well, you know, Mario, what exactly is a radian? Well, if you wanna know just one radian, it's gonna be approximately 57 degrees, okay? Not exactly, okay, just approximately to the nearest degree. But again, what we're doing here is we're learning how to think in terms of radians. Radian is just an angle measure, it's just that rotation, that amount of that rotation, and it's just a different unit. So let's take it one step further now. We've converted the units from degrees to radians, radians to degrees. How do we graph an angle in radians in what's called standard position? So standard position is, you want to put your initial ray, your starting ray, along that positive x-axis. If you rotate counterclockwise, that's a positive angle. If you rotate clockwise, it's a negative angle. So it's kind of like a spinner. If we spin this seven pi over six radians, where do we end up? Well, an easy way to think about this, okay, to start thinking in terms of radians, is to convert this into an a mixed number, like this is like an improper fraction. Six goes into seven once with one left over, so we're really looking at one and one sixth pi. I just kind of rewrote it a little bit. We know that pi is like a half revolution. It's like 180 degrees. We were talking about that here. But now we're going an additional one sixth of pi. So imagine dividing this up into one, two, three, four, five, six equal pieces this half revolution, we're just going one part out of six. So we went one pi plus one sixth pi. 
This here is gonna be our terminal ray where it terminates or stops, and that's gonna be our angle in radians in standard position. So that's how much rotation we're looking at here. Now, let's look at another example using a negative angle. So see the negative eight pi over three? Again, you still wanna start along that positive x-axis, that's your initial ray or where it initiates or starts. The only difference is we're gonna be going this direction clockwise, and let's convert this into a mixed number. So three goes into eight twice with two left over. So we're really looking at negative two and two thirds pi. So we know that negative one pi would be here. That's a half revolution. We said two pi was like one full revolution. And now we're going another two thirds pi. So if we were to go pi, we'd be right here. We're just going two thirds of the way, which is approximately right there. So that's our rotation, but in terms of radians. Now, the next thing you want to understand are what are called reference angles. What is a reference angle? Well, we already talked about how, you know, when you spin this, if you don't end up at one of the axes, you're going to either end up in the first, second, third, or fourth quadrants, right? You could end up right on that axis, but let's just talk about right now for the uh, sake of this example, that you're going to end up here, 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 or here. Wherever you end up, you want to drop a perpendicular straight down to the x-axis, never to the y-axis, always to the x, remember that. So for example, this one we would go down to here, this one we would go up to here, this one we would go up to the x-axis like so. So some people refer to this as like a bow tie, right? It kind of looks like a bow tie. But you look at that angle between the x-axis and the terminal ray, that's what's called our reference angle. Same thing here, this would be a reference angle, this would be a reference angle, this would be a reference angle. It's always gonna be between zero and 90 or zero and pi over two if you're thinking in terms of radians. So for example here, we know we spun around, it doesn't matter how many times you go around the, uh, you know, around uh, revolve here, it, what it matters is where you end up, you drop a perpendicular to the x-axis and you look at that angle in between that terminal ray and the x-axis. Well, you can see in this example, we went an additional two thirds of pi, so you can see it's gonna take another one third pi to get back to that x-axis, which means that our reference angle is pi over three, or one third pi. So you're probably saying, well, what is the significance of that, Mario? Well, this ties into what you learn about uh, when you're working with common trig values using the unit circle, and I talk about that in the video right there. Follow me over to that video, and we'll talk more about the unit circle in radians as well as in degrees. I'll see you over in that video.